I have some more information that's really interesting that's going to blow you away. There was a lot more going on at the coronation ceremony than I actually saw. And I'm going to just put some of the pieces together for you, showing you how Israel, the Jewish people, are very much a part of King Charles III and his coronation ceremony. So I want to first talk about, in Jewish news, what they said happened with Sir Knighted Rabbi Ephraim Mervis that had a sleepover at King Charles and Camilla's home at Clarence House. And this is what was reported about that, and I thought you might find this very interesting. And it said, Chief St. James Palace sleepover. Someone walked ahead so we didn't trigger the lights. Sir Ephraim and his wife, Lady Valerie, were hosted at St. James's Palace on Friday night and Saturday so he could observe Shabbat and attend the coronation service at the Abbey. This was written on May 7th by Jenny Fraser. The chief rabbi, Sir Raphael Mervis, has told Jewish News he was not prepared for his response to seeing the king and queen immediately after they had been crowned in Westminster Abbey on Saturday. He said, where I was sitting, the thrones of the king and queen were directly in my line of sight. I was sitting in the eighth row from where that beautiful gold carpet was that their thrones were on. The Talmud says that royalty of flesh and blood is a reminder of royalty of the heavens, meaning that when you see human royalty, it reminds us of how great God is, and obviously the king of kings is of far superior nature. Does he know the king of kings? But when I saw literally in front of me, the king and queen with their crowns on, at that moment, it was something very, very special. There was an aura about it. It was palpable. It was just there, and you could sense it. And that was something I wasn't prepared for. It just came and was very powerful. So, it was an enormous privilege for me to be there at that moment to represent our community. Sir Ephraim and his wife, Lady Valerie, were hosted at St. James's Palace on Friday night and Saturday in order that he could both observe Shabbat and attend the coronation service at the Abbey. Now, it was posted on the jewishnews.co.uk, the most diverse coronation in history, saw the chief rabbi join other faith leaders in blessing the king, and, and former Board of Deputies CEO Jillian Maron present ceremonial robes to the monarch. And this is very important. The king added a reference to people of every faith and belief. The chief rabbi was full of praise for his palace hosts, whose staff, he said, had really done their homework and had gone out of their way to make things comfortable for Sir Ephraim and Lady Valerie. For example, he said, there were some rooms in which a light came on automatically when a person walked in. The palace ensured that there was always someone to walk ahead of us so that we played no part in triggering the light. Yeah, God forbid you'd want to trigger the light, huh? He said that he had a sense of deep privilege for the respect being shown to the British Jewish community. I felt enormous appreciation for our gracious hosts. While Chief Rabbi Mervis would not go into specific details about a Shabbat like no other, he did pay tribute to the church leaders who made clear to him their awareness of Shabbat. Yes, it was a coronation, but it was also Shabbat. So he said that there was this aura about it. So how do we define aura? In spiritualism and some forms of alternative medicine, a supposed emanation surrounding the body of a living creature 
and regarded as an essential part of the in individual. Emotional, mental, and spiritual levels form an energy field around the body known as the aura. On Friday night, the chief rabbi attended a packed service at Central Synagogue while on Shabbat morning he prayed at a 6 a.m. service at the Western Marble Ark with a similarly enormous attendance. And then came the walk to Westminster Abbey. The last time there was a coronation on Shabbat was 1902 for King Edward VII and Chief Rabbi Herman Adler attended. The palace wanted me literally to walk in the footsteps of Chief Rabbi Adler, so the route was planned and copied accordingly after Sir Ephraim had made Kadush at St. James's Palace. All along the route, Sir Ephraim could hear shouts of Shalom and Shabbat Shalom, joking that the first cries came from non-Jews and the second from Jews. The chief rabbi said he was not surprised at the heavy emphasis on Christian theology in the coronation service, and though not that familiar with Christian liturgy, he was also not surprised at the several references to Judaism, including a blessing made by the Archbishop of York, which is a direct repetition of the blessing of the Kohanim. It's the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace. At the end of the coronation, as the king and queen were leaving the abbey, one last acknowledgment of Shabbat, as the chief rabbi and other faith leaders spoke a greeting to King Charles III that was deliberately without benefit of a microphone, so they didn't want you to hear what was being said. The religious leaders told the king, Your Majesty, as neighbors in faith, we acknowledge the value of public service. We unite with people of all faiths and beliefs in thanksgiving and give service with you for the common good. Wow. For the chief rabbi, it was back to the palace for a wonderful Shabbos lunch and, and then a Suda before going to Davin Minsha and then return home. For the Mervises, it was a cause of wonder of so many Shabbat events. Candle lighting, Kadush, the Suda it had ever taken place in a royal household. Each one was almost certainly a milestone and a first. Finally, what, as the chief rabbi noted, do you buy for the man and woman who has everything? In keeping with King Charles' own well-documented passion for the environment and Sir Ephraim's own deep concern for the safer and more protected planet, the plan is to plant a grove of trees in the royal couple's names in the United Synagogue's Dorote Forest in Norfolk. We thought it would be appropriate. Let me guess. <laughs> Royal English oak trees, perhaps? He added, it wasn't us personally. It was the Jewish community that was being honored. And I feel very privileged that I had that role. What we experienced was on behalf of everyone. Though with a smile he agreed that his royal experience had its roots in the close relationship he had built with the king over many, many years. So let's talk about the royal robe, the gold one. And he wore several different outfits and they put different robes on him, I should say. On the day of his coronation, King Charles followed coronation wardrobe codes. His attire was heavily bejeweled, dramatic, and regal, a combination of garments that will bring him as close to divinity as it gets. And I've talked about this before, but objects of the coronation regalia are the most sacred of crown jewels. During the ceremony, King Charles donned the St. Edward's crown and held the sovereign's scepter with cross and the sovereign's orb. 
The St. Edward's crown is a solid gold crown that is used for the crowning during the coronation ceremony. The last time it was used was for crowning Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. As King Charles exits Westminster Abbey, which has already happened, he appeared in the imperial state crown. This crown is set with 2,868 diamonds. The sovereign's orb is a representation of the monarch's power, and the scepter was originally made for Charles II in 1661 and has been used at every coronation since. While the crown is obviously an emblem of royal figures, the use of robes is truly what makes the coronation a thespian affair. That's theatrical. During the course of the ceremony, King Charles donned four robes that are each unique and symbolic. At the beginning of the service, King Charles wore a crimson surcoat that was worn by King George VI at his coronation in 1937. The velvet has been conserved by the Royal School of Needlework with lining and gold lace covered by Seville Row Tailors, Ede and Ravenscroft. Over it and upon entrance, the monarch wore the robe of state, also referred to as the Parliament robe. The long crimson velvet train is adorned with gold lace and ermine. During the anointment, King Charles wore the anointing gown, which is called Columbian Sidonus, or Shroud Tunic in Latin, a plain white gown that is free from decoration. The simple design is meant to convey purity before God. And they used a little G, I noticed. During the investiture, under the imperial mantle, a super tunica, a long Byzantine-inspired gold silk coat, is layered over. For the investiture, King Charles also wore the robe royal, an ornately embroidered robe decorated with national symbols over the anointing game. It is the oldest robe in the collection. It was made for King George IV's coronation in 1821. The robe consists of foliage, flowers, and crowns. It comes together with a gold eagle clasp. The robe is worn as the crown is bestowed on Charles's head by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And they spelled this two different ways, so I don't know if it's super tunica or super tunica but they spelled it two different ways in the article and it says both the super tunica or tunica and robe royal are removed before the monarch processes out of the abbey wearing the imperial state crown and carrying the scepter and the orb he will then wear the imperial robe the late queen did not wear her father's robe but instead made a new one out of purple silk velvet for departure king charles would don the robe of estate, which is made of purple silk velvet embroidered in gold. The robe was last worn by King George VI in 1937 by Ede and Ravenscroft. Okay, so you're not going to believe who presented the royal robe or the robe royal at the coronation, but it was none other than liberal Judaism president to present the robe royal at the coronation. Baroness Gillian Maron of Lincoln, a vice president of liberal Judaism, will present the robe royal at the coronation of King Charles III. She will be joined by Muslim, Hindu, and Sikh peers in presenting the king with four key pieces of regalia during the ceremony at Westminster Abbey. So I didn't realize that these other religions were handing him the regalia. I had no idea. Okay, so it says they will make history as the first ever non-Christian figures to be involved in the crowning of a British monarch. Can you say apostasy? The great apostasy? Now listen to this. Hindu peer Lord Patel will carry the sovereign's ring, which he did. 
Lord Kamali from the Muslim community will present the armils, which are the bracelets. And Lord Singh of Wimbledon, who is Sikh, will carry the coronation glove. Baroness Marin is the Jewish liberal Judaism president, is a former chief executive of the Board of Deputies of British Jews and a member of Lincolnshire Jewish Community and the South London Liberal Synagogue. She said, This is an honor beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I feel humbled to be making history in a coronation ceremony that will validate Britain as a community of communities. Through his coronation, His Royal Highness King Charles III will demonstrate his commitment to protect the space for faith and its practice through religions, cultures, traditions, and beliefs. Through my part in this, I hope to do the Jewish community proud. A little bit more about this lady, this Jewish lady from liberal Judaism, is that she is Jillian Joanna Marin, Baroness Marin, born in 1959, is a British politician and life peer serving as Chief Executive of the Board of Deputies of British Jews since 2014 and a member of the Labour Party. She has been a shadow spokesperson for health and social care since 2021. She was previously Member of Parliament MP for Lincoln from 1997 to 2010 and held several ministerial offices in the Blair and Brown governments. She's a Baroness. And Jewish News has a video of the former board chief executive, Jillian Marin, who took her seat in the House of Lords. And it's his communal leader who was recommended for a peerage by Sir Keir Starmer served as a Labour MP from 1997 to 2010 before joining the board. The former Chief Executive of the Board of Deputies, Jillian Marin, has taken her seat in the House of Lords. The communal leader who served as Labour's former Health Minister was MP for Lincoln, which I just said, and she lost her seat to the Tories. Prior to joining the Lords, she served as the Board of Deputies of British Jews Chief Executive for more than six years before announcing that she was stepping down in January of 2021. Baroness Marin, who was recommended for a peerage, wore the traditional scarlet robes for the short introduction ceremony where she swore the oath of allegiance to the Queen. And, of course, this was before the Queen passed away. So it says, she was flanked by supporters and fellow labor peers, Baroness Smith of Basildon and Lord Knight of Weymouth. Marie Vanderzil, president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews, said, We are so proud of our former chief executive, Gillian Marin. Her introduction to the House of Lords today was so well deserved after decades of service to the public. She was an excellent chief executive, and we wish her every success in her new work as a peer of the realm, Mazel Tov, Baroness Marin. So it was she, CEO Jillian Marin, presented the ceremonial robes to the monarch. And this was a gold robe, a gold robe that was put around his shoulders and was fastened with an eagle clasp by uh, the Prince of Wales, William, his son. So you have to know that these people from all of these religions, the Hindus, Sikhs, Shia and Sunni Muslims, um, the Zoroastrian faiths, they all marched in in a row. And this part I did not even see, I guess because I missed the first part of the coronation where they were in it. But I had no idea that they were handing the regalia that gives the king his power and authority as king at the coronation. So I want to show you the clip of when this happened. And you'll see these people walking in. And these are all the representatives of these other faiths that are not Christian. 
and have nothing to do with Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So not only did you have Sir Ephraim Mervis there, who was given very special treatment so that he could attend, but you also had the liberal Judaism CEO putting the robe, handing the robe to the king at the coronation. So two very prominent Jewish people were there at the coronation. The gentleman is calling them the faith leaders, okay? But they have nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ or Protestantism. And this is a great apostasy from any monarch, any British monarch that's ever lived has not done what this king has done. So keep in mind that he's continuing to say faith leaders. But these are people that are worshiping false gods that are marching in. And also pay close attention when they bring that gold cape and put it over the king's shoulders. That is where this liberal Judaism CEO was involved with the gold cape that they put on the king. And then you'll see uh, the Prince of Wales, William, come over and I think he kissed his dad, the king, on the cheek after fastening the eagle enclosure on the cape. And then they professed all together to the king that they would be in liege with him, basically. Now making their way in, led by the Virgin Ben Stewart, and they are representing a wide range of faith communities. The Baha'i community, the Jain community, Zoroastrian trust funds of Europe, London Buddhist Vihara, we have Lord Singh there of Wimbledon, who is director of Network of the Sikh We have a Buddhist. The uh, Shia Muslim community, the Sunni Muslim communities also represented. This is all the apostasy. And, uh, just at the rear there, we can just spot Sir Ephraim Mervis, who is the chief rabbi, um, chief rabbi of Great Britain and the United Hebrew Congregations of the Commonwealth, Baroness Merun representing the Jewish community, comes forward. Well, this, the this is the Baroness. Imperial mantle or robe royal, made of cloth of gold. The robe royal, the cloth of gold, presented by her. She's there on the far right with the white collar in the red outfit. Right there in the front. That's her hair down there at the bottom. Prince of Wales. Fastening the clasp. Before the king leaves the abbey, an unprecedented gesture at a coronation. He prepares to meet the leaders and representatives of the faith communities whose presence... So now he's standing in front of all these pagan people acknowledging all of their faiths and religions which I saw this part but I did not see the golden robe so I had no idea that it was the Jewish community of liberal Judaism that sponsored presenting the golden royal robe to to the king. So this was a total surprise to me today when I was just researching some things and I discovered this second big time Jewish connection to the coronation through this baroness and her bringing the royal gold robe to the king while she's representing the liberal Judaism uh, community in Britain. And then all of these Hindu, Sikhs, Buddhists, Zoroastrians that you just saw. And they handed these other elements to the king. 
I just really don't understand how he thinks all of that's going to work. I mean, you've got all of these different religions. They all have different gods. They are not following the one true God of Israel. They're not following the one true Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I mean, they're trying to bring Jesus into that, but, you know, the Lord said, you shall have no other gods before me. And they're breaking the Ten Commandments and denying that Jesus is the king by bringing in paganism. I mean, this is exactly what I told you King Solomon did that got him in trouble with God, was bringing in foreign trade and then he would meet these people and marry women that were worshiping idols and pagan images and you know burning incense to false gods and he would he would marry them and then trade followed the bride and all of that you know and he didn't finish well Solomon did not finish well and God allowed the temple to be destroyed so what do you think is going to happen when you've got mystery Babylon the Great right there with all these faiths coming there with the defender of them all, the king, and them setting up Jerusalem as the place where all the nations are supposed to come and worship the one true God, but all of them are worshiping pagan idols. So it makes no sense. It's a great apostasy that has taken place. And this is just another amazing connection to the Jewish community in Britain that you may not have heard about or known about and I wanted to bring it forward since I told you they would accept him as their king and the Jewish community already said blessings over him as their king so it's just it's just one little small footstep to you know them just becoming members of the Commonwealth of Britain and bringing Israel into that and having him over them as their king. And it's good. So really, it's just one more element of bringing in the one world religion with the one world government, the beast, which is a king, sitting upon the old monarchy of Israel, the deadly head wound by a sword, and is resurrected and a new king will sit on that throne for the first time in 2,000 years as the anointed one and he has just become the anointed one and he received the power and authority when the emblems of regalia were handed to him. The ring, the scepters, the bracelets, and I guess there's a glove that he wore when he held the orb with the cross and I think they had swords and I wrote about all of these regalia items in my book The Almond Tree Aaron's Rod the Messiah King of Israel regarding Jesus the King of Kings and it's really an incredible story I didn't have any idea that the Jewish community was getting involved in handing the gold robe to the king, the royal robe. And this is when they handed him the regalia and he received power and authority as king. So if these people like Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Muslims, they were handing the elements of the regalia when the king received his power and authority. What does that say about this king? And what does that say about his reign that's about to happen? Now, of course, he's been ruling as king since the queen passed away, but it's when you have the coronation ceremony and you go through the holy sacred anointing with the holy oil, and that is when you receive the power and authority as king. I guess you can figure out what it means and uh, I just wanted to share with you what all went down, what happened there, and just so much apostate stuff going on. And I just wonder, you know, what the queen would think about him doing that. 
you know, I know she did a few things along those lines, but she did pledge to be defender of the faith, which is the gospel only. And King Charles III has deviated from Christ and the gospel by bringing all this in because it's all sacrilegious, it's all corrupt, these gods are false, and there's only one true King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the Lord coming as the salvation of Israel, the redemption. And he stood there in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of Israel watching for their redemption, which was Passover night. For the Lord to come down and save them. And there was the Messiah right there in the garden. What do you think about that? And a lot of them missed it. Because they elevated their own righteousness to be of themselves more righteous than that of the king. So they will not see him again until they say Baruch haba Hashem Adonai blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord interesting stuff and this is just more proof that the Jewish community is very involved with this king and that they will accept him and have accepted him as king in the British um, Jewish community all right well that's all for now see you in the next video and like, subscribe, and share, and please support my channel at paypal.me slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O, -C -O -C -O. that's K-K Rococo, and my address for donations is Kimberly Ballard, P.O. Box 246, N-I-W-O-T, Niwot, Colorado, 80544. The things that are happening, I just cannot believe. It's stampeding very fast. And the Lord has caused me to find certain things that just help put the pieces of the puzzle together. And this is just another thing that you can add to everything. Show that the Jewish community is very much accepting of this king. All right, we'll have a nice evening. Nighty night. <laughs> God bless everybody.